Sam Darnold, according for Joe Douglas, has been weighed and measured, and you know he is he's not valued. It, all the actions lead you to believe that. Everything the Jets have done as an organization have shown you that. That's it. I don't need to hear the verbiage from Douglas. I don't need to hear what he told his parents. I don't need to hear from Adam Gase. I don't need to hear from Dowell Loggins. Actions do say something because people lie. People lie right to your face. They'll tell you something and do something completely different. That happens a lot. So what you're seeing with the Jets, the actions leave you to believe. They've already they've already looked at Sam Donald, the player, and said, you know, we're in a situation here where we can get a generational talent at the quarterback spot. Nothing is going to prevent the Jets from drafting Trevor Lawrence, aside from winning, if they don't have the number one overall pick. Nothing is going to prevent the Jets from drafting Trevor Lawrence based on Sam Donald's play. If they end up with the number one overall pick and he declares and comes out of Clemson, there's nothing, nothing that I could say, nothing that you could say, nothing based on his performance, nothing based on anything a caller could say would prevent the Jets. So this whole idea that the Jets and this narrative that we are now judging Sam Darnold, we want to see what he can do with all three of these receivers healthy, mind you, this is not Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, and Jerry Rice. We're looking at Mims, uh, Crowder, and Perryman. I mean, these are the three receivers, and you throw in the tight end and hurt. I mean, this is what you're going to judge Sam Darnold on when you have other young quarterbacks in the National Football League. Murray's got DeAndre Hopkins. Your guy Josh Allen up in Buffalo's got Stephon Diggs. So now I'm judging it based on these three receivers, and now I'm going to look at it and say, Sam Darnold, oh, now he can play because he's got three of our upper echelon receivers on this team on a roster that stinks. The roster is so bad. It is so bad to hear the coach after the game say, well, I, uh, you know, when asked the question, uh, well, how do you make the argument you're 0-11 of still staying here? Well, the team continues to fight. The team was fighting yesterday? I mean, come on now. I mean, let's let's be honest here. The, t- the team is what it is. It showed more fight uh, against the Los Angeles Chargers, showed more fight against the New England Patriots. Yesterday was not an example of that. You know, and, and they gave you another, you know, another you know, poor performance uh, where they get their doors blown off by the Miami Dolphins. It was a non-competitive game. Donald goes in there because I would imagine Sam Donald's pressing. And why wouldn't he? He's coming off a shoulder injury, re-aggravation of the same sprained AC joint. Everybody's clamoring about Trevor Lawrence. You know the coach is going out on its ear, you know, as soon as this season is over. He had the the owner declaring that the head coach, after week one's dismal performance against Buffalo, that he's some offensive genius and guru. So Sam Donald's a smart guy. He reads the tea. He knows the writing on the wall. He knows it's his days are not here. So he's trying to press a little bit. And those press when Sam Donald's is pressing, he's gonna he's gonna turn the football over. You can even make the argument when Sam Donald is not pressing, he's turning the football over. But everything this organization has done has led you to believe that they don't believe in the quarterback, which is fine. Which is fine because the quarterback has also not done his job and has not grown and gotten better at that position. Now I don't think he's been particularly well coached and there's no support around him. So it's kind of like what comes first, right? Well you know where's the issue here? There's all kinds of issues with the Jets. They are so poorly coached. Nobody gets better when you look at this Jet team. Nobody. I mean, honestly, I mean, Quinton Williams, we're going to look at that. Greg Williams at least had the defense playing well a year ago. They paired off talent left and right. And then you get these asinine explanations after the game of how they go about their business. And I can't listen. My message to this, I said it to Donald three weeks ago, two weeks ago, last week. Protect yourself. Protect yourself. Because the Jets are not looking out for you. You don't need to show how tough you are. And the idea now that the Jets are still grading out Sam Darnold in his 33rd start as an NFL quarterback is moronic. That narrative is moronic. And anybody that buys into it, and the Jets thinking that people are actually going to buy into that, leads you to believe just how inane and stupid the Jets are as a franchise. That's what I mean. Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes, makes no sense, sense when it it's... comes to the Jets, but here's what Darnold is confirming with games like yesterday. Darnold is confirming with games like yesterday that it doesn't matter if the Jets get the number one pick. If they get the number two pick or if they get the number three pick, they are still going to be looking for another quarterback. See, that's the difference. Everyone knows and understands that if you get Lawrence, you're taking Lawrence. The thing about Darnold is if you play like that yesterday where Joe Flacco looks eh, – under, like leaps and bounds better than you with those receivers, then that means even if it's the second pick, you're gone. And the reason why nothing makes sense with the Jets is if you actually believe 
the reports that were out there or the informed speculation, if you will, that Sam Darnold could get a two and a five or Ian Rappaport joins us every week. He thought a late first round pick. Well, games like this aren't helping. So the Jets don't make any sense because not only could they risk and, and put Sam Darnold at risk that he could get re-injured with his shoulder and that could sink his, his trade value, his play could sink his trade value because it looked bad yesterday. And there's only so much that you can, yes, blame on the roster for sure. I thought it was crazy. You got starters out on the offensive line. And Sam Darnold, what do you ask him to do? But you said, and put it out there, wait till he gets these three receivers. Wait till he gets these oh three receivers. God. And it was abysmal.